I told myself before I started YouTube that I was gonna be different and that I wasn't gonna be like every other YouTuber and that I wasn't gonna be the sellout, average, blonde bimbo on YouTube. I was gonna be someone different. You scam people out of their time, out of their money. It is a scam. My ownership in this coin just bought me this beautiful Rolls Royce. I am partnering with Kenza Cosmetics and they are doing a promotion right now where all of their makeup brushes are free. Oh, 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 None of this will probably be that surprising to anyone, and that fact in itself should be a little concerning. Today is the first video of kind of a running series that I want to start on influencers who have scammy behavior or do shady business deals. I thought it would be an interesting look at behind the scenes of the influencer world and some of the shady business aspects that come along with being an influencer. And I thought the perfect start to this series would be covering the many many scams of Tana Mojo. But first, before we get into that whole um, mess, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you like videos like these and want to see more in this series, then definitely subscribe. This video was inspired by two things. The first thing was a comment left by Mark, a longtime friend of the channel. He left a comment on a video that I did on influencer crypto scams where he said, by now it's impossible to feel bad for anyone who continues to fall for the latest scam of the month that Tana's promoting. From TanaCon to overpriced products made with wish quality to Tana's angel agency to now this, something's gotta give. I was also inspired by Smoky Glow, one of my favorite creators on this platform, and one of her most recent videos on revisiting TanaCon. I highly recommend checking it out and I'll link it down below in the description. So before we get into the many shady things that Tana Mojo has done, first off, who is Tana Mojo? Oh no one cares. Tana Mojo is mainly known for being a YouTuber. Good morning, all of you beautiful people. Though present day, you could kind of just call her a general influencer. And over the last few years, Tana really gained a reputation for being one of the most, if not the most problematic YouTubers in present day times. Tana really centered her brand around being the messy and the real YouTuber. And because of this, I think her audience really lowered their standards with her and she was able to get away with a lot more than any other YouTuber has been able to get away with. You know, there's that whole saying of always setting expectations low so that you can exceed them or in Tana's case, still not reach them, but then kind of try and pass it off by making a lighthearted joke and being like, haha, what did you expect? It's me. And all of this has led to her getting away with or people forgetting fairly quickly a lot of her scammery behavior. And well, there is a lot of scammery behavior. So much in fact that I wouldn't be surprised if I missed some of it in this video, but I thought I would cover everything I possibly could so that hopefully you can see a pattern of behavior and why, in general, in my opinion, Tana Mojo should not be trusted. This video is not made to demonize or villainize anyone. Tana Mojo is a human being just like all of us and we are all flawed in our own ways. Please don't leave comments about Tana's appearance or making any digs at things that she can't change about herself. This video is simply meant to highlight the many scams or shady business dealings that Tana has been a part of so that hopefully more people can learn how to look out for these types of things because I want to help more people avoid scams. So the story of Tana's many scams starts all the way back in 2017, though at this point Tana was already a fairly large YouTuber with a big following and a full-blown career. Before 2017, Tana had been on tours and done meet and greets, but from what I found, there weren't really a ton of complaints at that time for the way that the meet and greets were handled or for fans who felt mistreated or scammed. I do have to say it's very clear from Tana Mojo's early content that she did have a really rough childhood or didn't come from much wealth and really built her career on her own. I would say Tana Mojo 
as cringy as it is to say, is an example of someone who is self-made. She didn't have help from anyone. She kind of went and did YouTube on her own and figured it all out and built her career herself. And I have a lot of respect for that. I just wish it didn't come with the part of scamming and taking advantage of your fans, the people who've supported you through this whole process. So anyways, our story starts in 2017, where if my math was correct, Tana was only 19 years old. Having an entire career and team behind you at only 19 is definitely a lot to put on such a young person. Not to say that any of the problematic actions that Tana did at that time or the scams and shady things that she participated in should be excused, but if any should, it definitely should be the ones when she was still a teenager. In April of 2017, Tana bought a Coachella wristband from a fan of hers. As the story goes, this fan ended up having extra tickets to Coachella and wanted to sell them to somebody. And at a similar time, Tana tweeted about needing tickets to Coachella, so this fan messaged her and they were able to link up and exchange the tickets. Tana then accuses the fan of selling her fake Coachella wristbands, saying they didn't work and sort of insinuating that she wanted her money back. This caused this fan to get a ton ton of hate. Thank you to all the Tana Moto fans for the comments you've been leaving me. You guys are so sweet and I know Tana's all about positivity and like being nice to people and anti-bullying so thank you guys for really embodying that. I'm sure your idol will be so proud of you for the messages you're leaving me. So this fan aka a private individual felt the need to make a YouTube video and post their side of the story with a ton of research that the wristband was legit, that it should have worked. So at first I sent her a picture of my Coachella app that says congratulations your wristband is now activated and then I also sent her an official Coachella email with my tracking number and the, and the items I purchased. I bought two general mission wristbands and it has my UPS tracking number. After the fan story time was posted, Tana ended up making this super, super long Snapchat rant, basically calling the fan a liar and just doing a ton of deflecting. And I understand, like, you have a YouTube channel, like, if something, like, you think happened, happened or whatever, you want to get views or whatever, but, like, this is also my life and, like, my livelihood. It's like, I am still a human being, and if you know that that, like, didn't happen, like, the things that you're saying ha didn't happen the way that you're saying them, like, you're fucking over another human being. Tana's response was really interesting because nothing in this story is adding up, but it's also interesting to see how impressively Tana navigates her lies being exposed. She's really, really talented at deflecting and shifting the narrative. All of a sudden, this fan making a video defending herself turns into this fan attacking Tana, who is a human being, on a platform where she's trying to build her career. I feel so awful for the girl that got mixed up in this and ended up being attacked online. And overall, from the story, my perception as a complete outsider years after this has happened is that Tana seemed to either want to get her money back from this person and get a free wristband in the process, or that Tana was trying to milk a situation to create a story time and get views and engagement. Either one, not the greatest thing to do, especially when it involves messing with the life of a private individual. Another thing worth noting is that in 2017, Tana also got into a drama or controversy with her former assistant, another private individual. Tana publicly posted about having a horrible former assistant, the reasons being that the assistant was quiet. She's very I'm a very like shy person. I'm very shy to new people. So like when I would like talk to them, I wasn't like stuck up. It was just like quiet and like awkward, I guess. I was like, hi, like, yeah. And that the assistant didn't clean her room in the exact way she wanted it cleaned. When she said that I did a half-assed job, um, here's a picture of her bathroom that I had cleaned spotlessly. And so clean. Here's a video of her closet that I had unpacked and cleaned for her. AKA things that are first off kind of really petty and second off things you could keep private, bring up with the assistant if you have a problem and then move on. The fact that you know you have a large audience and you're publicly blasting this person who used to work for you is just so disrespectful in so many ways. So once again, people were able to find this private person and send them a bunch of hate. I'm not trying to start more drama with Hannah. I'm just trying to clear my name because the amount of hate comments that I've been getting so much from 
so many like Tana followers or whatever or like dislikes on my videos or whatever um, is like ridiculous. So once again, this private person felt like they needed to speak publicly and defend themselves. And from the account of the assistant, it really sounds like Tana took advantage of this person's time. The assistant was overworked and underpaid. Listen to every time that she says I'm making good money or a lot of money, um, it was only $10 an hour. And Tana was really flaky on paying the assistant. I said, Tana up and then Bella said no. And I said, do you think you wake her up? LOL, she still hasn't sent me the money and everything's coming out on of my bank account and I'm overdrawn. And then she said, I'm not home. And I said, damn. I said, hi, Becca, it's Lisa. I feel so bad for texting you, but I'm leaving for vacation today in like four to five hours. And Tana told me that she would pay me before and before I left and she hasn't yet and won't respond and I need the money um, before I leave because I have absolutely none. I'm so stressed out. Do you think you can get a hold of her for me? Overall, she just seemed to have a lack of respect for the assistant and the assistant's time. And it's just shady business. It's not professional. And overall, in both of these cases of 2017 instances, it really shows that Tana didn't have a lot of respect for other people's money, time, and privacy. And overall, seemed to have this attitude that she could kind of work around the system to get what she wants from people, which seems to be an attitude that has gotten worse and worse over time, unfortunately. Moving forward, in 2018, Tana Mojo promoted free makeup brushes to her audience as a sponsorship of sorts. Today I am partnering with Kenza Cosmetics and they are doing a promotion right now where all of their makeup brushes are free. All you have to do is pay the shipping. I'm obsessed with so many of them and they're really high quality brushes and literally all you have to do is pay shipping. So swipe up to check them out. Shout out Kenza Cosmetics. Okay guys, I'm gonna add the Flamingo set to my cart. I was gonna do the Bimbo one, but they were already sold out. As you can see, literally, Zero dollars, come on, get my fucking cart. So many people must be on the website, like what's going on? I just added it to my cart. You should do the same thing, they're literally free. These free makeup brushes were by the brand Kenza Cosmetics, the infamous Kenza Cosmetics. And first off, let me just say, one of the most telltale signs that something is likely a scam is when they market it as free. All of their makeup brushes are free. Because nothing in this world is free. Nothing is free. And when things sound too good to be true, they probably are. So if someone's marketing these fantastic makeup brushes as being free, no. So a lot of people saw Tana's promotion of these makeup brushes and went to buy them thinking it's this amazing flash deal and they have to get in on it. Of course, the catch being in order to receive these free makeup brushes, they had to pay a ton in shipping. They're really high quality brushes and literally all you have to do is pay shipping. And either the makeup brushes never came or they arrived two to three months later broken and damaged. So a lot of people were really upset about this whole experience and felt very scammed by this whole experience. What's interesting about the Kenza Cosmetics situation is Tana sort of laid low when controversy was coming out and people were mad. She just sort of stopped responding, didn't have much of a response and just laid low. Whereas another influencer that promoted these brushes, Gabby Hanna, tried to defend them and talk about how it's not a scam and people need to manage their expectations. Manage your expectations a little bit and was just kind of really offensive in the way that she was talking about this experience where so many people felt they wasted a ton of their money, which not a lot of people have a lot to spend. So she received most of the backlash for her super, super poor response. Meanwhile, with Tana, people were just like, oh, there's Tana again, being silly, as if it's not more serious than that, but. You know. And Tana was also allegedly reselling gifts her fans gave her, and she often promoted her Poshmark where she resold clothes, gifts. A small clothing company called Bleach Tie Dye exposed her on TikTok for allegedly asking them for free clothes, never wearing them, and then selling them for an even higher price on Depop. Everybody could clearly tell that it was about Tana. And there ended up being a lot of complaints about the quality of the Poshmark clothes that Tana was selling, and people just receiving damaged items from her Poshmark. Get your together because this is unprofessional and bad for your brand, boo. Still hasn't shipped. It's been five weeks. I love Tana a lot, but I ordered this on the 1st of March and contacted her two times before her shop went inactive. Never received my item and I paid. Never received this item and never got tracking. It's been a year, still no package. I still haven't received it and it's been more than two weeks. Never received my item and was in contact with seller about receiving a refund and never actually got a response or refund. And this was spring of last year. Very upset about 
about it, but still a fan. It's really a bummer because a lot of these are kind of smart business moves in a weird way. Doing sponsorships, promoting a Poshmark, reselling clothes that you're getting, all of that could be seen as a smart business move if it wasn't done so poorly. Like, just be legit. It's not that hard. Give people refunds if they're unhappy with a product. Don't do shady business deals. And if something that you didn't think was a shady business deal ends up being one, apologize. These things are not that hard. It sucks because I want to respect Tana Mojo for being a hashtag girl boss, but I really can't when you're manipulating your fans, taking advantage of them and screwing them over for wanting to support you. Like that's so messed up, but things are about to get even worse. Undoubtedly, the largest and most impactful scam that Tana Mojo has done is one that we'll talk about that also occurred in 2018. TanaCon. People are stupid. And it all goes downhill from here. There's so, so many details to cover in TanaCon itself and lots of great videos doing a deep dive into various aspects of TanaCon. But basically, in short, TanaCon was a revenge convention that Tana put on to rival VidCon. Fuck VidCon! Anyone who created VidCon! I think all of the rebelled people and all of the unwanted people should host a little meet and greet in Anaheim, California on the same days as VidCon. A convention for video creators that she felt had screwed her over. So she put on a competing convention around a similar time that VidCon was happening that people could go to to support her and other creators. And reportedly there are already 80 confirmed creators to attend. Miranda Sings, Ricky Dillon, DC Neistat, Bella Thorne. It was petty and spiteful, but also something entirely new that the influencer realm hadn't seen before. An influencer putting on a convention with them kind of at the head, at the lead of it all, and the face of the entire convention. I mean, it was called Tana Khan. But unfortunately, 20 year old Tana Mojo was not entirely equipped to throw such a convention. Tana Khan was thrown together in an unrealistically short amount of time. Cue Firefest similarities. Why do people think it's a good idea to throw together an entire convention or event or festival in just a few months? How do you ever think that's going to work out okay? But you know, and because it was thrown together in such a short amount of time, there were so, so many catastrophic issues that occurred. First off, Tana marketed the event as if there will be tons of free tickets. And I would love to meet you guys for free because the records are free. Why? Do people keep using the word free? It's too good to be true if something is free. I have not seen a single other badge. Have you guys seen any people that claim they got free passes or anything? No. 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 And what we ended up finding out later is that there actually wasn't a ton of free tickets available for people. And so Tana was kind of like, oh, these sold out really fast. The free tickets sold out, but you can actually buy these tickets, which is sort of a marketing trick kind of in a way. You can get it for free. Oh wait, that sold out? Buy this instead. The venue that TanaCon was held at also could not hold the amount of people that were coming nor the amount of tickets sold. This is crazy. And this is something that Tana and her partner knew, yet they still sold that amount of tickets. Why? Like, especially if it's your first year doing something, why not just play it safe? Have a good time. It might not be like this huge giant convention, but it doesn't need to be. You can just play it safe and then slowly ramp up as you go along. And guess what? You probably would have made more money that way. At the day of the convention, there is an extremely, extremely long line, which was apparently planned by the people who planned this event. It would be really, really cool to have people like outside waiting to get in. Like people love to be oppressed outside. Yeah. Because like, I waited in the rain, like they love that shit. Yeah. I love that shit. Which is such a bizarre thing to plan out. Like, yeah, let's make sure that people are waiting in an unrealistically long line because somehow that's exciting for people was the justification weird but okay so everyone who was wanting to attend the event was just sitting around in the hot california sun getting sunburned because they weren't planning to be outside for that long and there was just so very very little safety measures 
for the whole event. Once again, the disrespect for others. Tana's gonna go and pretend that she cares about people right now by giving water to the people who couldn't get in because this whole event's canceled for the day. Security had a hard time holding people off. The police had to come. Someone passed out. The event just slowly unraveled into complete chaos. The event felt almost apocalyptic. So TanaCon ended up being canceled after the first day. And so many people who paid for tickets and travel money to travel from out of state to the convention ended up having to just lose all of their money because the convention was canceled due to poor planning. The funniest part, not that any of this is funny, is the gift bag or goodie bag that ticket members received, which just had a bunch of random crap in it, basically. Very, very cheap crap. Today, I thought I might just do a little what's in my bagsy from TanaCon. Stickers from PETA. Gucci princess, but I can't afford that because I wasted my money on a ticket. <laughs> and I don't even know what this is. Like it reminds me if you've ever had a dad who's gone to like work conferences and maybe and maybe this is just my dad, but ends up coming home with a bunch of random knickknacks with random company logos on them, like a stress ball or a stapler. It sort of reminds me of that, but for a gift bag with a bunch of TanaCon logos all over it. Either way, you know it's going to sit on your desk for maybe a few weeks. You're going to forget about it and then slowly push it into a random corner where it's it's never seen again. So the entirety of TanaCon was a complete scam that also put people in danger and received mainstream attention for how truly catastrophic it was. Of course, there were other people involved. Tana's partner, Michael Weiss, also has a huge responsibility in what happened with TanaCon. But when you're the face of something, in my opinion, it's your responsibility to put the right people in place. And there was so much that could have been done to prevent this disaster by anyone involved. And it feels like everyone involved just literally watched the train wreck happen from the sidelines. After TanaCon, Tana and Michael Weiss kept trying to pin blame on one another. You said that Tana told her audience and told everybody that she was putting a lot of her own money in this, and you said that's not true. Yeah. Define me, it's been me telling, it's been me saying I'm putting my own money into it. Because I'm t whenever I've talked about that, I've talked about the investments that were like made, you told me we're in this together, this is our money, I'm investing it here. Which is just so beyond ridiculous because point blank period, both of you guys are to blame, both of you guys had a part in it, you're both wrong. Let's stop trying to blame one another. Tana also kept promising to reimburse people, but reimbursements for TanaCon never came. After TanaCon, Tana sort of laid low for a little bit, you know, didn't do too much scamming after that for just, you know, a good few months. Gotta let everything cool down, you know? But very soon after, her shady businesses and business dealings started to pop up again. In 2019, Tana announced that she got her own MTV reality show and also got into a relationship with fellow problematic YouTuber, Jake Paul, which in a weird way was smart. Do I wanna say it was smart? I don't know. But basically they were both problematic. And so coming together, people were really interested in what that dynamic would entail. And they sort of canceled each other out. So people sort of forgot about a lot of their problematic aspects, at least more than people should have because both have done a lot of problematic things, like literally putting your fans in danger, extreme danger with TanaCon should not be something that's completely forgotten about because you have a reality show and are dating another YouTuber. What? How did that happen? How did we let that happen? So the relationship between Tana and Jake climaxed? Is that the right word? That's not the right word to use. That's a little... It reached, reached ahead? Now I'm just thinking of innuendos. But anyways, the relationship all came to a high, oh gosh. Okay, you get what I mean. With the two charging 50 to $75 to their fans, for their fans to be able to watch a live stream event of them getting fake married, which 66,000 people paid for. 
66,000 people paid $50 to $75 to watch these two very clearly put on a fake wedding. And the worst thing about it isn't just the fact that people paid $50 to $75 for this thing, especially because they broke up very shortly after this whole fake wedding, but also because the live stream literally did not work at all. And it kept glitching and freezing and was just like not working whatsoever, even though people paid serious money to watch this whole wedding thing happen. And no one was refunded, even though what they paid for literally wasn't working. It seemed Seems that both saw their online social media relationship as a great financial opportunity as well as a way to promote their various projects that they were working on. But to me, it's just so, so weird that they used a significant life event, something that so many people is like the, the most important thing that'll ever happen to them, a marriage. They used that event just to scam fans out of a glitchy live stream? The internet is just so weird to me. I don't understand it sometimes. In January of 2020, not long ago yet so long ago, Tana released a perfume called Tana by Tana. She released all of these promotions for the perfume, talking about how special, unique, and custom it is. <laughs> Anybody this Valentine's Day, girl, this is the potion, okay? Big spray, look at that mist, look at that cap, look at that smooth application of the cap. Only for people to find out with a very, very quick search that the same perfume bottle that she was selling was being sold everywhere on sites like AliExpress and Alibaba for 30 cents. And she was selling the perfume for $48. And I don't think that the perfume itself, the liquid itself, was costing anywhere near $47.70 to make. So that's a big profit margin. As I build a brand and sell you things like this, you know, at the end of the day, I am, I am selling you this right now. Then in 2020, when celebrities and influencers started coming out with OnlyFans, Tana launched her own OnlyFans and a lot of people were complaining about it. Basically, Tana was just posting Instagram photos and basically clickbaiting a ton of people to pay money for her OnlyFans, which ended up causing a ton of problems for other OnlyFans creators because the platform ended up getting a ton of complaints from people who had paid for these major influencers that weren't delivering what they promised to deliver on the platform to the extent that OnlyFans had to change their rules, put more restrictions in place, and it made it really hard for other creators on the platform to be able to succeed. I did a whole video on OnlyFans, so you can definitely check that out if you want to learn more about that situation. Another sort of funny thing to mention is that in 2020, Tana offered photos of her, if you catch my drift, in exchange for votes, which she called booty for Biden, which is basically uh, voter fraud? On September 30th of 2020, Tana tweeted something that might have broken election laws. She said she'd send OnlyFans followers a photo of herself free of charge if they sent proof that they had voted for Joe Biden. Because you know, activism? My Tana uncensored messages are officially broken and the point has been made. I got tens of thousands of messages of people telling me that they willingly voted for Joe Biden and it's the best thing ever. You don't need my ass to make you go vote. So go vote because you wanna see a change in this country just like me and thank you to everybody who joined me today. Booty for Biden man. The problem is this could literally be voter fraud for this reason. And following the potential issues with hashtag booty for Biden, Tana actually got her YouTube verification removed. Then, in April of 2021, Tana decided to further capitalize off of her OnlyFans success through creating Tana's Angels Agency. That's a tongue twister. Supposedly to help others gain success off of OnlyFans. This is not a team I would trust. <laughs> know y'all. I would not trust you with my bank details. As someone who spent some time in the modeling industry and was signed to a modeling agency, agencies themselves, to me, 
kind of seem like a scam. There's very rare situations where I've met anyone where an agency like went above and beyond and helped accelerate their career so much. Usually what entails when you go along with an agency is horrible, horrible contracts, them taking a huge chunk of your pay and not doing much to actually help you get work in my experience. And a lot of agencies, whether they're modeling agencies, acting agencies, OnlyFans agencies, tend to target young and naive people who can be easily manipulated by bad contracts or have little business experience. So Tana made a Twitter post basically claiming she's going to help so many people get rich off of OnlyFans. They just have to join her agency, which takes a huge chunk of people's pay because apparently Tana's Angels Agency is a subcategory of unruly agency. And a lot of people debunked Tana's claims that she'd be able to help you get rich off of OnlyFans. Tana is making money on OnlyFans because she's already got a name. You being in her agency does not guarantee you the same success she's had. You don't need an agency to succeed at OnlyFans. You just need a fan base and that can take a while. I feel like this makes no sense. Would her OnlyFans be as popular if she wasn't already an internet personality? If she was just the average person trying to make ends meet and side money on OnlyFans with no prior following, would she have a multi-million dollar business with OnlyFans? You already know this is an effing scam. Another YouTuber scam. Do you guys not learn? I don't think this is gonna end well. Also, she's effed over so many people. How do y'all trust this? Oh yes, let's create an agency to steal money from OF girls that are already struggling. What percentage do you get from them when they're a part of your agency, Tana? You money hungry person. And this person really broke it down to show how much of a scam and just not worth your time being involved in this agency is. OnlyFans takes 20%, Unruly takes 10 to 20%, and Tana takes 10 to 20%. Who's making the bag again? Because it sure doesn't sound like the girl or guy is, which is a very good point. That's literally 60% at most and 40% at least of this person's income just gone if they sign with this agency. And this makes me sad because it's so, so predatory to some of the young fans who grew up with Tana, maybe watched Tana when they were super young and then went into early adulthood along with Tana and may now be 18 years old because she's basically not only encouraging them to go into OnlyFans, a platform where you really have to understand the implications of what you're getting into and what that means, but she's also encouraging them to sign up through her agency where she takes a huge, huge chunk of their money. As someone who saw this happening in the modeling industry and has heard countless of horror stories, please, please do not do something like this. Do not get involved with an agency like this. A few months ago, Tana has been accused of scamming her fans once again, this time through creating a lingerie line that she once again promoted as this like awesome, special, unique line when once again, a quick Google search shows the same pieces or eerily, eerily similar pieces being sold on AliExpress, Alibaba, and Shein. <laughs> this is $12 on Shein. Go buy it there. Don't pay Tana $30 for her to resell it to you for a fraction of the price she was selling it for. At this point, we're not surprised, but get that bag, I guess. But also people don't buy this stuff if you don't want to waste your money. As I mentioned in the video I did on influencer crypto scams, Tana also promoted a cryptocurrency recently called Titscoin, where she basically told the audience to buy this cryptocurrency or get in because it helped her buy a Rolls Royce. Can you believe my ownership in Titscoin just bought me this beautiful Rolls Royce? Get yours now. And if you wanna know more about how problematic that was, definitely check out my video on cryptocurrencies.
I thought I would add in really quickly some other shady business elements that Tana has participated in that I didn't cover when filming. Tana promoted a platform called EduBirdie, EduBirdie, however it's pronounced, which was a huge controversy for YouTubers and Tana continued to promote it even after a bunch of YouTubers were criticized for promoting it. What's up guys? You already know that I failed high school. And um, I loved writing though, but if you are having trouble with writing, swipe up and check out EduBirdie. You can choose from hundreds of professional skilled writers to work on an already existing paper or edit a new one. Swipe up! EduBirdie is basically a platform that's promoted to children that writes essays for them with a guaranteed A, which is plagiarism and children can get in serious, serious trouble for using this platform and the platform overall has been exposed for being a complete scam. Tana also promoted Cloudy, a melatonin vape that also has essential oils in it. Inhaling essential oils, especially so directly, isn't known to be the greatest thing for you. She was basically promoting a vape-like item that's supposed to help you sleep to her young audience fan base. Just a lot of questionable actions there. Tana also created the 1111 Project, which is apparently a charity that was created by her and her team. Although there's not a ton of information on 1111, the site links back to all of her social medias. The 1111 project was created during COVID and was supposed to help people during the pandemic. The thing is, this charity, its only role was to donate to other charities. So if you donated to this 1111 project, they would just disperse that money into other charities. My personal theory, although there's still not a lot of information on the 1111 project, is that its sole purpose was for Tana to be able to write off all the donations on her taxes because you know all that OnlyFans money equals a whole whole crap ton in taxes come tax season. Tana also apparently had a phone case sale where if you bought one of her phone cases you got a free t-shirt except for she didn't explicitly describe what the t-shirt was and the free t-shirt was a t-shirt of David Dobrik. On 420 Tana Mojo had uh, like a merch sale and I bought one of her phone cases right because they're super fucking cute whatever I know she's problematic anyways um but it said for the 420 special there was a shirt that you would get for four dollars and twenty cents like extra like a merch shirt I assumed from her since this is her merch line so I was like okay yeah fuck it like whatever honestly like a like a four dollar shirt when's that ever gonna fucking happen I love wearing like comfortable t-shirts to sleep and stuff or whatever so I was like okay cool Tell me why I just opened my package and the phone case is super cute, okay? I'm happy with the phone case. The merch is David Dobrik merch. Like, it literally says David's vlogs. So fans of Tana received a David Dobrik t-shirt around the time that David Dobrik had all of his controversies. So those were some kind of other questionable things that Tana has participated in that I thought were worth mentioning. There's lots of other controversies that Tana has been involved in. I've seen a lot of dialogue recently on the photoshopping that Tana does and how she promotes unrealistic body image standards because how she portrays herself on social media is so, so different to how she is in real life, which once again can be problematic for the young girls that follow her. And overall, Tana just seems to be really good at capitalizing off of facades. So is any of this illegal? It's hard to hold influencers legally liable for scams that they promote because they can just say that they didn't know that it was a scam or they weren't aware of the fraudulent aspects. But under section 52 of the FTC Act for the dissemination of false advertisements, the FTC objective is to protect consumers from unfair conduct in the market. It shall be unlawful for any person, partnership, or corporation to disseminate or cause to be disseminated any false advertisement. So under the FTC Act, false advertisements should be punishable. But a lot of influencers are not being punished, unfortunately, which sounds weird, but you know, there should be some sort of accountability for spreading false advertisements and causing your fans to lose money. I can't blame anyone for wanting to make money, but when you continually screw over your own audience in order to do so, the very people who support, care for, and have helped you throughout your entire career, well, that's kinda shitty and kind of a big bummer. You could 
play naive for one or two things, maybe, but I think Tana knows that there really aren't any excuses anymore for her actions, so she's just stopped giving them. At this point, Tana is well into adulthood and she knows exactly what she's doing. So let's stop giving people the benefit of the doubt or redemption arc opportunities when they've shown us time and time again exactly who they are. I swear we're all in like this weird toxic relationship with problematic influencers. If you want to see more videos like this covering different influencers and their shady businesses and scams they've participated in, leave a recommendation for an influencer you want me to cover down below. And uh, stay safe out there. See you next time. The bell is getting big.